In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We have gathered here today to witness this man vow to follow Christ more closely through the public profession of the evangelical councils of poverty, chastity, and obedience, as well as the legion's proper vow of humility. They have heard Christ's call, they have experienced his love, and they now feel the urgent, urgent need to respond with a total gift of themselves. The whole of the liturgy of this mass of religious profession explores the reality, the meaning, and the implications of this call and response. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the feast of God's kingdom. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo.
Let us pray. O Lord, who have inspired these, our brothers, with the resolve to follow Christ more closely, grant them, we pray, a blessed end to the journey they now begin, so that they may be found worthy to offer you a perfect gift of loving service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. In today's celebration, the Liturgy of the Word teaches us how to respond to God when He calls us by name. In the first reading, we encounter the young Samuel, who answered the Lord's call. His attitude of openness and prompt generosity is an example for our brothers preparing to consecrate their lives to God through their religious profession. Let us listen to God's word with open hearts and respond to him too by saying, present here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Distinguished. And Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. He ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again, the Lord called Samuel who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said. You called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So Eli said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, speak, for your servant is listening. The word of the Lord. Sacrifice or oblation, you will. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I've accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found of him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in the hope that I may possess it, since I have indeed been taken possession by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead, I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John.
Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. The Gospel of the Lord. Present yourselves those who are going to make the religious profession. Christian Michael David Patterson. Present. Bin Hu Le. Present. Matthew Paul Arto. Present. Kieran Joseph Hamilton. My dear brothers, what do you ask of God and his holy church? I consecrate myself to God as the legionary of Christ, the minister of the church, and the Christian. Thanks be to God. Antes de todo, me gustaría dar un saludo a las familias de la lengua española. Y antes de todo, gracias por el sacrificio de su hijo y su generosidad. Y para los de Brasil, no me atrevo a decir nada en portugués. Welcome to all the families and friends, and especially to the families of whose sons are now making this first beautiful step in this witness to the rest of us. And we thank you for your generosity, not only of the brothers who are stepping forward, but of the families who have willingly let go of sons they love. And that is no small sacrifice. In fact, we thank you on behalf, really on behalf of the whole church and of society at large for all of you saying yes to something that is a journey that entails much love, much faith, much hope, much surrender, and a daily yes to our Lord. And so we thank you for that. And for those from, I see a large contingent from Vietnam, I am not even going down that path. So <laughs> we'll just say hello and thank you. <laughs> Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. So why am I afraid to die? What is it about death to myself that scares me? What is it about surrendering to someone who is pure love and yet who I don't always tangibly experience? What is it that scares me? The other day I was in an airport. <laughs> I was in Denver, Colorado in the airport. Arrived a bit early, and for those who know Denver, there are a couple places upstairs on the next level <clears throat> that really have very little traffic. 
and I found a nice <clears throat> quiet spot and settled in, prayed my breviary, prayed my rosary, did my midday exam, and then made a couple phone calls, did a little bit of work, and then I noticed that the flight was delayed, so I did some more work. And as I was preparing to go to my flight, I went down the escalator, and I come down the escalator, and I probably take him four or five steps, and I hear, Father! And I look up, and it's another priest. And, I look, and he's way younger than I am, okay, which is not hard to do. <laughs> and so he's with a group, and they're on their way to Medjugorje for the first time, all of them. So a conversation starts, and then at some point he says to me, Father, would you hear my confession? So I said, well, I got a great little place upstairs. So we went back up the escalator. <laughs> and we had confession. And after confession, as we were walking down to meet his group, he said, I wanted to go to confession before this pilgrimage. But before I left, I couldn't find a priest available for confession. And he said, this morning I was begging our Lord that I would meet a priest in the airport. And I looked at him and said, oh, I got it. So you're the reason my flight is delayed. <laughs> Next time, ask. <laughs> and we both laughed. <clears throat> and then I said, but on a serious note, I said, don't forget signs like this. Don't forget little signal graces that our Lord gives to us that reminds that He knows me, He loves me, He's got me. He thinks about me and He guides me and He prepares the way. And sometimes we may not be thinking He's listening to our prayers and then all of a sudden He does something that reveals us or reveals to us what he's about and his closeness to us. And as I went back to my gate, prepared to board, just the joy that filled my heart of seeing God's action. And brothers, as we look at this front row and as I look at the families behind you, but I also keep going back at the other brothers and the candidates and all the friends our hearts are filled with joy because you're trying to listen to God. And that inspires each of us. It lifts us. It fills us with a joy and a joy that the world can't give. It's a very different feel. It's a very different flavor. And you've been getting experiences of that flavor and you must never Forget that flavor. And that beautiful phrase at the end of that second reading, the prize of that upward calling in Christ Jesus, a calling that I do not deserve. And yet Christ calls me to his measure. He calls me to himself. Do you know what a gift that is? The other day, when I was in Denver, I met two of my nephews there, and I happened to be meeting with them on a weekly basis doing a little book study. We keep saying different books. They both work at a ski resort, and I thought, I've got to do something to get to these boys, you know, because it's a little aggressive out there. And they're happy to see me. They picked me up at the airport, and I said, let's go into the cathedral, and we went in. We pray the rosary on the way, and then as we get out of the car, right near the cathedral in, in Denver, gorgeous cathedral, but outside of it, the poverty and the number of poor and addicted that are on the streets there. And as soon as we get out, I met Kiki, purple hair, she's only 28 years old and just run ragged by 28 years old. So I went over and knelt next to her and we had a conversation. I gave her a blessing and we talked. 
And I'm thinking to myself as I went into the cathedral, why me and not her? How is it that I get to be here? Understand the blessing, please. The gift of being able to hear that voice. The gift of knowing that you're known and you're loved and you're called and then you're sent. Then you're sent. I have a little rosary in my pocket. And I always keep, it's the only thing I have on me that's blessed besides these hands. But I always keep it. And invariably it gets given away. And I always bless it or have it blessed by the Pope every time I go and other ones. But there's somebody that I know that constantly gives me rosaries and she always checks back to see if I have it. And I don't because somebody else now has it. So she just gave it to me about three weeks ago. It's blessed. And this time she put my name on it and I thought, okay, that's, <laughs> that's getting aggressive. <laughs> but why do I mention this? <clears throat> I give it to people and I like to bless people. And I just blessed your crosses right before I entered here. But bringing something consecrated, something blessed into whatever circumstance or somebody's life, or keep it with you, as I always tell people, it's blessed, keep it with you. But brothers, you're blessed. You're consecrated. And now whatever circumstance you're walking into, it's different. Because you're different. You're not the same person. And as you've heard me say to you before, your prayer is no longer your prayer. It belongs to other people. Your sacrifices, your yeses, even your noes, they belong to everyone. They're not just yours anymore. Because you bring him with you. And you've been set aside. You are set aside. And you're set aside so as to sanctify, to give hope, to remind us. You remind me. Well, John Klein and I were just in Germany. And it struck me because I had the blessing of giving the retreat to the young adults there, the college students. And it was a powerful experience for them, but for me, and I told them at the end, I said, hey, don't think this is a one-way street. When I see God work in you, it moves me. When you say yes, all of us are lifted. All of us. That first reading... It says that Samuel was not yet familiar with the Lord. And look what happens though. Samuel discovers somebody who's calling his name, who knows him. Zacchaeus found the same thing. All of a sudden he climbs a tree and somebody looks up to him and says, Zacchaeus. And he's like, how do you know me? There was a woman of Zarephath, a widow who was out collecting sticks to make her last meal. And Elijah shows up. God sent me to you. Here she thought she was forgotten and discovered she's known. And not only known, she's loved and she plays a huge part in salvation history. The great thing about Samuel is once he discovered that somebody knew his name, knew him, and in discovering the call, understood this is a call of love. That disposition that says, speak, and please give me a heart that stays open to you. People all the time are asking me, what can I pray for? I just say, pray that I listen to the Holy Spirit, because I am slow and stiff-necked, right? And they said, yes, you are. <laughs> but if I have that, what else do I need? 
Let me read something to you from our own that you brothers know so well. It's from our own proper spirituality. And it's called, it's our ratio, Christus Vita Vestra. This is number 58. God's loving gaze is at the origin of every vocation. That loving gaze that makes eye contact with you and is always trying to make eye contact with you. With age-old love, I have loved you, Jeremiah 31. A legionary is someone who is discovered with astonishment that from all eternity God knows him. Do you know how many people in this world are so lonely and would love to know that somebody actually knows them? How blessed you are. From all eternity that God knows him with the full weight of intimacy that that word bears in sacred scriptures. To know somebody was inside and out. So our whole life is dedicated to knowing the God who called us. This task, the noblest that a man can undertake, in a way already entails living heaven on earth. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. And let me read the second one, 59. Hail, favored one. We have all received the vocation to life. Discovering why fills our existence with light and joy because it allows us to accept God's wonderful plan for us. Why do I exist? This vocation manifested in time to each person but eternal in the mind of God is the revelation of our own personal identity. Now listen to St. Paul. Because what Samuel didn't quite know but learned became the heart of St. Paul's life. And I will mention one thing. When it says Samuel was not yet familiar with the Lord, you must be somebody who is very familiar with the Lord. And that brings us to St. Paul. Listen to this. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. It's for his sake that I've accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having any righteousness, not having any holiness, of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness, the holiness from God, defending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection. St. Paul understood the power of that resurrection and that made that call all the more powerful. Here is somebody stronger than death looking for me, calling me, sending me on mission, and sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It's not that I have already, well, before I say that, Being conformed to his death, and that's the part that scares us. But if I could switch it, and I could tell you, look, brothers, if I can introduce you to this person that will help you reach your potential, would you be interested? If I could introduce you to somebody that would show you what love means and how to love and the joy of loving 
would you be interested? Because we hear death and we think letting go, suffering. What we don't understand is what death means is learning how to love. Death is only death to selfishness, pride, vanity, arrogance. These are all my strengths, okay? I'm so good at it. Death is not death to who I am. It's only to death to things that hold me back from my potential. And if we will shift the focus, we begin to re realize there's such a sweetness in dying. There's such a sweetness in learning how to love and learning how to grow in humility and learning how to trust and then communicating that joy to other people. Blessed are you, brothers. Blessed are you. And now for the old ones who've actually made their vows and been living them for years. Or some of the ones back there that have not been living them for so long. It's not that I've already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity. I'm not there yet. I'm not. But I continue my pursuit in the hope that I may possess it since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. He's the one who's got me. He's the one who's called me. He's grasped me. And he calls me deeper and deeper in love and deeper and deeper in maturity in the Christian faith so that he can send you out as light and leaven and salt to bring his truth and his person and his news and his hope to other people. You're that consecrated soul that transforms the circumstances. And your yes and your family's yes is lifting all of us and reminding us of that higher calling, that prize and that upper calling in Christ Jesus. Brothers, we congratulate you. We thank you for your witness. We entrust you to our prayers. And we hope from you that fullness of life and holiness that is your calling. Amen. After finishing his novitiate, a legionary makes his first profession of temporary vows, promising to follow Christ by leaving his vocation as a consecrated religious of the legionaries of Christ. The order of religious professions is as follows. First, four, four novices will approach the altar to make their first profession. Then, 18 brothers will renew their temporary vows. The church invites us, all of us, present to pray for the sanctity of these brothers and for their fidelity to God through their vows. The right of, of first profession can be found on page 12 of your booklet. This will be followed by the renewal of vows, which can be found on page 25 of your booklets. My dear brothers, by water and the Holy Spirit, you have already been consecrated to God's service. Are you resolved to unite yourself more closely to him by the new bond of religious profession? I am. In your desire to follow Christ perfectly, are you resolved to live chastity for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, to choose a life of poverty, and to offer the sacrifice of obedience? May Almighty God grant you His grace to fulfill what you resolve. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Lord, look upon these 
servants of yours who are resolved to dedicate their lives to you by making profession of the evangelical councils in the presence of your church today. Mercifully grant that their manner of life may bring glory to your name and further your loving plan of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Thanks be to God. Receive this crucifix. May Christ crucified be your sole possession always. Hail, O cross, our only hope. Receive this crucifix. May Christ crucified be your sole possession always. Hail, O cross, our only hope. Receive this crucifix. May Christ crucified be your sole possession always. Hail, O cross, our only hope. Receive this crucifix. May Christ crucified be your sole possession always. Hail, O cross, our only hope. Come forward those who are to renew their vows. God, our Father, gives us the grace to persevere in our resolutions. Let us pray to him for these servants of his who are resolved to renew their vows today in the presence of the church. Lord, in your providence, you have called these servants of yours to be perfect as the gospel teaches in your mercy, grant that they may persevere until the end along the way of your love on which they have set out with such joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the presence of the Most Holy Trinity, our Lady of Sorrows, 
and St. John the Evangelist, through your Reverend Father, promise of our Almighty God to live for three years in poverty, asking and obedience, in accordance with the institution of the religious life of the Church, as expressed in the Constitution of the Congregation of the Living Knights of Christ. To fulfill these vows, I put my trust in the help of God's grace, the infinite merits of the heart of Jesus Christ, and the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and may our patron saints and protectors, all of whom I humbly invoke on this day. For I also promise and vow to Almighty God not to undertake any action to obtain or keep, either for myself or others, government positions or assignments in the congregation. Thanks be to God. Please stand. <clears throat> Aware of our needs and knowing that without God we can do nothing, we place our petitions in the hands of our Heavenly Father. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that he be a source of renewal and bring the faith to a deeper, the faithful to a deeper union with Christ, serving as a witness to the church he shepherds. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For political and world leaders, that they will guide those under their care with prudence and justice, following the church's teachings and example. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For all those living under the shadow of war and persecution, especially in Ukraine, Russia, Palestine, and Israel. May they find the light of God's presence shining in their trials. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians, that we may be courageous and generous witnesses of the gospel, spreading the good news to an ever greater number of people, giving them hope by which we are saved. We pray to the Lord. For the newly professed brothers and those who renewed their vows today, may they receive the grace they need to live the commitments of love that they have placed in Christ's hands before the church and their legionary family. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the families of the professed, that God will, be, will bless them a hundredfold for the generous gift of the vocation they have nurtured and which they offer to him today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful and most loving Father, we entrust our needs to the infinite merits of the heart of Jesus Christ. May he present them to you and gain us salvation through his intercession. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the law of his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the oblations and prayers we offer you as we celebrate the beginnings of religious profession and grant that the first fruits of your servants may be transformed by your grace into a plentiful harvest through Christ our Lord. Amen. Here, in the celebration of the Eucharist, Christ sacrifices himself for us out of love. Religious profession is also a sacrifice, not only for the legionaries who have made their vows, but for their families as well. This offering of our life is lifted up on the altar and united to Christ's redeeming sacrifice. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. He is the unblemished flower who sprang from the root of the virgin and declared the pure of heart blessed, teaching by his way of life the surpassing worth of chastity. He chose always to hold fast to what is pleasing to you and becoming obedient for our sake until death. He willingly offered himself to you as a perfect and fragrant sacrifice. He's, he consecrated to a fuller service of your majesty those who for love of you leave all earthly things and promise that they would find treasures in heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and our bishop and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, 
Peter, Paul, Andrew, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and of these your servants, which we make to you on their profession day. Sanctify this offering of your mercy so that those who by your gift have dedicated their lives to you today may at the glorious coming of your son be admitted to the joy of the eternal past. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he set the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In a humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hoping your abundant mercies graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs. 
with John the Baptist, heathen Messiah Barnabas, and all of your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not waiving our merit, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Receptu salutaris monici, et divin institutione formati, how de he musti he chere. Pate noste, qui es in genis, sanctificetur nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, via voluntas tua, sigut in cielo, pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received fill us with joy, O Lord, and grant that by their power, these, your servants, may faithfully fulfill the duties of the religious life they have begun and may offer you willing service through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the inspirer of every good resolve, foster your purposes and strengthen your hearts that what you have promised you may keep with persevering faith. Amen. May he grant you to hasten in the joy of Christ along the narrow way you have chosen, rejoicing to bear the burdens of your brothers. Amen. May the charity of God make you a family brought together in the Lord's name to show forth the image of the love of Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered for these sacred rites, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Those who have responded to Christ's call through the profession of their vows, echo Mary's response to her call. I am the lowly servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. Let us pray that these religious will persevere, like Mary, as faithful servants of God, and flourish in the vocation God is calling them to embrace. May they be steadfast apostles who build up the kingdom of God through their fervent prayer, the witness of their consecrated lives, and the fulfillment of their apostolic mission. <laughs> 